Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to tell you why this 2021 4Runner is probably the best 4Runner and best SUV this size that you can buy. Now my customer just purchased it used. I have to say, probably the all round best made 4Runners were in the 90s when they can run forever. I've seen them with 500, 700,000 miles on. You get a car that's that old, you're going to have problems cars from the 80s, early 90s, they're really old, right? And they got a lot worse gas mods than the modern technology that Toyota has. So, if you want to get a very reliable Toyota 4Runner and SUV in this size, this 2021 is a phenomenal example of it. Now, Toyota is no longer going to put these V6 engines in the Tacomas. Here's my son's four-cylinder Tacoma, and he has this, but a four-cylinder, so he bought a TRD 4x4 Sport with a V6 to tow boats, to haul around, to drive around out in the countryside and on his land, because he wants the power of a V6 and all-wheel drive. Presently, the 2024s are out, they still got the V6s, but it looks like they're gonna do the same thing that they did with the Comas. They're gonna get rid of the V6, replace it with a four cylinder turbo. And if they do that to this 4Runner, I think it's a big mistake because the towing and hauling of a Turbo 4 is much different than a V6. They can give you all their baloney figures of, well, it's got this much horsepower and it's got this much blah, blah. The four cylinder turbo Turbos cannot pull like the V6 engines, period. You're taking a boat in out of the water, you're going off road in the dirt. Turbos take longer to kick in, they build the horsepower. It's a completely different driving experience. You don't have the instant torque and the pulling power instantly as you do in a V6, which is one reason I didn't like the Toyota took the V8 out of the Tundras. Now, the Tundras you can only get in a six twin turbo, right? Well, my grandson's got a V8 Tundra. He tows stuff off all over the place with this giant big trailer that he's got, right? That same trailer, friend of his, has a new Tundra with the V6 twin turbo, and he says it does not tow like his V8 did. The V8s just have that grunt torque that even a V6 doesn't have, and you put the turbos on it, on paper, the V6 is supposed to have more torque, more horsepower, but not really in regular driving situations. That's on a dyno. Unless you're driving your vehicle on a dyno and not on the road, it doesn't mean anything. You want the extra power, in his case, if you're towing heavy loads. And the reason that they sell the heck out of these forerunners is because they serve purposes for just about everybody. They're nice inside, they got a lot of room, front and back, they got a lot of trunk space. You push these seats forward, man, you're gonna have all kinds of room to haul stuff, and you can tow a lot if you need to. Why? Because of what's under the hood. Well, take off the stupid beauty cover. Super dependable V6 engines. They can run forever, and it's got all the modern technology so that it gets good gas mods for a vehicle that's this big and this heavy. And being a forerunner, at least the one sold there in the United States, check it out. Made in Japan. J means Japan. This baby was made in Japan. These forerunners have such a great track record. I have customers that have 500, 600. I had a customer that had 750,000 miles on one of these things. That's what people want. And this particular one is a four wheel drive one. So, just like my son's fancy Tacoma, it's not going to get stuck anywhere. Got good clearance. And I hope it doesn't happen that they ditch the six and put in a turbo four. They're talking about doing that in 2025. We'll see. If you're watching this in 2025, you'll know, right? But I hate to see them do it. You have something that is ultra dependable. Pretty much all round SUV that can do with four wheel drive just about anything you'd want to do, right? I've seen people drive these things in Moab, Utah on those crazy skinny dirt roads going down to the plateau. That's kind of mule traffic and these things go through them perfectly fine. I'd hate to see them ruin that vehicle and throw in a four-cylinder turbo. And as we go under, what do you see? They're full-framed vehicles. Full-frame. Adds to weight, 
That's the reliability on a big, heavy, reliable vehicle like this that is really off-road capable. It's going to be a gas hog. It doesn't matter if you put a four-cylinder engine in it. It really doesn't even matter if you turn them into mild hybrids. They still aren't going to get good gas much. For example, the guy brought me a brand new Tundra with the V6 twin turbo. He was only getting 19 miles a gallon on the highway, and that was a hybrid V6 twin turbo. Even with the hybrid, it only got 19 miles a gallon on the highway because it's a big full-frame truck and this is basically a full-frame truck that they call an SUV. They sell these because people want something like this. Why would you want to ruin it by putting in a four-cylinder turbo instead of the six-cylinder engine that they use for decades? People love them. They run forever if you take care of them. Why would you change something like that? I know they're all into this, oh, we want better gas, blah, blah, blah. You can't have a big, heavy, steel-framed vehicle that's ever gonna get decent gas mileage. They just weigh too much. They're high up in the air, so they're not aerodynamic. They just are not gonna get good gas mileage. That's just the way it goes. Like the saying goes, you can't have your cake and eat it. You can't have a big, solid, four-wheel drive, truckish type SUV and get great gas mileage. It just isn't something you can physically do. Now as we shut the hood and look inside, these things are luxurious. You shut the door, just sounds solid. Beautiful black and chrome trim. Beautiful black interior, right? The sunroof, no. It's based on a truck. Who needs a stinking sunroof anyway? Two four-wheel drive, you can have it in high two-wheel drive, high four-wheel drive, or low four-wheel drive. And it's got a very dependable five-speed automatic with overdrive. Personally, in my own experience with four runners, I'd never seen one of these transmissions break. They're Toyota ASIN transmissions. They can just go on forever. And what people want, reliability. People don't really give that much of a difference of a few miles a gallon here or there when they're buying a vehicle like this. Hey, if they want gas mileage, they'll buy a vehicle like my Matrix, not this big forerunner. As we start it up and take it for a drive, it just sounds powerful. Got a really nice backup camera. Look, I can see the lions on the end of the driveway so I won't knock them over like people always do. First thing you notice, it's smooth idle. Totally smooth. It's nice and high up in the air, so you get a good view of things. Makes you feel secure. Of course, it says oil maintenance required because she brought it over here for me to change the oil. <laughs> I gotta do that later. I mean, you just feel safe in this thing. It's relatively high, but it's not topsy-turvy, you see? I mean, you take corners in it, no problems. You don't even hear the tires squealing. You just hear the oil in the back seat sliding back and forth that she has there for me to put in when I'm done. And the transmission is butter smooth. It just shifted. I didn't even notice it. You only notice the tachometer changes when it shifts. You don't really feel it. The braking is extremely smooth. Now, it is a big heavy vehicle, so we're taking it to the drag strip, but don't expect drag racing capabilities here. That's not what this is for. Plenty enough power for climbing up hills and stuff. It gets you where you're going. It it's a big, heavy vehicle, and it's very stable. You just don't expect it to be a real drag racer. It's no snail. It's got like 272 horsepower, so nobody's behind us, so we'll floor it. It throws you back in the seat a little. Got a nice sound for a V6. Smooth shifting. Hey, we're going 55 in no time at all. And then if you need to pass somebody, you floor it. You can see it picks up quite nicely. So, it does what you want. I mean, driving down the road in this thing, you just feel like you're totally secure in your driving experience. You feel totally safe, yet it's totally comfortable, even though it's a full frame. It's got a nice ride. If you're into the modern conveniences, it's got traction control. You can turn things on and off. Now, I do have to say, there's one thing I hate about this vehicle, and it has those stupid oil filters that are just paper elements, and they're inside a cursed, plastic holder, right? So you gotta have a special tool to take it off. And let me warn you, if you're gonna do it yourself, see this special tool, Motive X tools, listen. This is made out of metal. Do not buy one of these that's made out of plastic. The plastic is crap, it'll break, and you'll go nuts. 
It's hard enough getting these dumb plastic assemblies off just to change this instead of having a cartridge filter that fits on it. It's just plain stupid, but that's one dumb thing Toyota did. I guess they will save the world so the oil filter will only be a piece of paper and not a thin piece of metal with a paper in it. It's still polluting. It's just stupid. So Toyota, will you stop doing this? It's just plain dumb. But otherwise, you want an SUV that's like this for all around all wheel drive, a nice V6 engine, no turbo, not a four cylinder, but a V6 that's been out for ages. If you want to get one of these, my advice is get one right now or buy a used one in the future if they're going to go to the turbo fours because that's not what this vehicle is about. Put it in your other vehicles, but please, this is one of the best vehicles you ever made, Toyota. Don't ruin it by throwing a stupid four banger with a turbocharger on it. That's not what this vehicle is about. It's been proven. People love it the way it is. Don't ruin a good thing. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.